Okay, welcome to Parts 4. Today we're going to be looking at a couple of different ways to make some more advanced parts. Uh, basically, from this simple plate down to this saw blade, I'm going to show you, uh, well, some of them I've got a couple of different ways. Some of them build off of um, the parts before that. So let's go ahead and look at the simple plate. I'll give you a minute to look at the dimensions. Okay, for this one, I've got three different methods. And I'm just going to focus in on a different area here. I'm going to start off by selecting the rectangle tool. And I'm going to enter my dimensions. That was an 8 by 6. And as you can see, I'm in grid snap. That's fine. I'm just going to come out here and click on the grid point. Now, um, <clears throat> I need to place a half inch diameter hole one inch over and one inch up from each corner. Since we're in grid snap and um, those holes would fall on a grid point, it is very easy for me. All I have to do, uh, I'm still in grid snap, just snap to the grid point that is one inch out and one inch up from each corner. Okay? Um, in the real world, everything doesn't fall on a grid point. So let's put in another rectangle. And I'm going to switch to free pick. And I'm just going to pick a point out here. And as you can see, if we go one inch over and one inch up, there is no grid point. So I've got a couple of different ways that we can do this. The first method, I'm going to go to Edit, select Parallel, and I'm going to give this a one inch offset. And I'm going to parallel each of the perimeter lines one inch inside my blank. So this intersection point is where I'm going to snap all of my, uh, all of my holes. Put in a half inch diameter hole. And I'm going to switch to intersection snap. I can then place the hole on each intersection point, select my delete button, and delete my paralleled lines. Okay. Uh, another way we can do this, we'll put in our rectangle dimensions, switch to free pick. Just placing it out here at some random point. And <clears throat> I'm going to uh, select my circle tool. I'll put in a half inch diameter for my hole. And now what I need to do is click the set reference point. We talked about this, I believe, in parts two. I'll hit set reference. And as you see, I'm in free pick. I need to switch to object snap because I want to snap to the ends of one of these lines. I'll select my corner. And since I'm in relative input, I need to give it relative coordinates. That's one inch on my X, one inch on my Y. Again, remember when using the set reference point, always click the set reference point button before you select your corner. Uh, notice I do not have to reselect the object snap because it remembers from the last time. I'll select the corner, enter my relative coordinates, that's one of my X, and this time it's going to be negative one on my Y. Hit the set reference point, select the corner, enter your coordinates, that's negative one on my X, negative one on my Y. If you forget to hit the set reference point and you just select the corner, it's going to place the hole on the corner. You can, uh, you can delete it and re-add it if you want to, or you could just select the Move tool and enter your relative coordinates. That's negative 1 on the X and positive 1 on the Y. Okay. That... I am getting the data entry window. Uh, if you go to View, Select Options, we have this option, use pop-up keyboard input. Um, 
I believe now by default it's checked uh, if, if you install a new version. If, if you've come from a previous version, uh, you might have to go in here and, and check that. Uh, but then all I'm doing at that point is uh, after that is checked, then just start typing on your keyboard. Okay? Yes. Uh, let's see. So if I select my line tool, and um, here, let me just, I'll start my line, and then I can type, and it just, it, it automatically appears. Okay? Okay, let's look at our next, it's, uh, I just called it plate two. I'll let you look at the dimensions real quick. Okay, uh, this one really, I've just got one way, because all it's doing, it's building on using the set reference point and the parallel function. So I'm going to start off by entering my, uh, my rectangle dimensions. That was a 7 by 6 rectangle. I'm in grid snap, that's fine. I'll just snap to a grid point going to go to edit, select parallel, and I'm going to give this a one inch offset. And I just want to parallel the left vertical line. I'll parallel it one inch outside. Now I want to delete the original line. But if I select delete and click on the line, if you remember from uh, parts one, when we, and I'm going to hit the escape key to undo that action. When we place a, a rectangle, we place it as a group. So we must ungroup that. I'm going to go to group, select ungroup all. And now since I've ungrouped it, the program allows me to delete the one vertical line instead of the entire group. At this point, I'll select edit. Uh, we can use trim, trim and extend. I want to extend this line, I'll switch to object snap, to the end of this line. Uh, another thing we could do, we could say we want to move the end point. I want to move the end point of this line to the end point of that line. Okay, next we need to place our holes. And those are just uh, half inch diameter holes. I'm going to click the set reference point. As you see, I'm still in object snap, so I just need to click on this corner. And my offset is one and a half inches on my X and one and a half inches on my Y. Again, always hit the set reference point before you uh, select the, the point from which you want to place whatever object you want to place. In this case, it's going to be a hole from this corner. And the offset on this one is going to be one and a half on my X and negative one and a half on my Y. And finally, all I need to do is radius the corners. That is a one inch radius. We'll go to draw. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll go to edit. Select fill it. Enter a one inch radius. And to radius the corners, all you need to do is select the two lines that make up the corners. Okay, next, uh, we've got a, a plate with a hole in it. Um, this one, really, we're trying to find the very center of this plate. Let me let you look at the dimensions. As you can see, we've got odd dimensions here. And I've got three different methods. Uh, and, you know, and actually, if we, if we sat down and thought about it, we could probably come up with a lot more. Uh, but these are, are probably the, the three easiest that I could think of, or at least that uh, we first thought of. We're going to start off by placing the, uh, the rectangle. That was 8.45 by 6.32. I'm in grid snap. That's fine. I'll just snap on a grid point. It really doesn't matter. Uh, now, 
First, we're going to go to Markers, and we're going to select Mark Object. And I'm going to give this a default division of 2. Or I'm going to leave it at the default division of 2, rather. And I'm going, going to select the top line, and then select the bottom line. I'll then select my Line Tool. I'm going to switch to Marker Snap, and I'm going to connect the two center markers. I'm going to go back to Markers, select Mark Object, Again, leaving at the default division of 2, I'll select OK, and then click on my line. This marker represents my center point. I can then select my circle tool. I'll enter a 1-inch radius. As you can see, I'm in marker snap, so I just need to snap on that center marker. I'll delete the, uh, the center line that I've created and go to markers and select clear markers. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another thing we can do, let me enter my dimensions. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to select my line tool. I'm going to switch to object snap, and I'm going to draw a diagonal line. I can then go to markers, select mark object. Again, leaving at the default division of two click my diagonal line and this marker represents the center point. Again, we'll give it the one inch radius for my hole. Oh. Um, as you can see, I'm in object snap when I needed to actually be in marker snap. Let me select escape and switch to marker snap. I can then delete my diagonal line Go to Markers and select Clear Markers. Okay, uh, the last method, method that I have, and again, this is only going to work if, uh, if you're placing a hole in the very center of a blank. I'm going to place the hole first. I'll give this a one inch radius. I'll switch to Grid Snap. I'll just snap on a grid point here. And then I will enter the, uh, the perimeter. Again, snapping on that same center grid point. Okay, next we have a triangular plate. And the only thing that's missing here is the angle. We can go to Data, Select Object, click on our line, and uh, as you can see, this is saying that it's it's 202 degrees. Let's close out of here for a second. And we're going to look at our angle clock. As you can see, uh, 0 degrees equals 3 o'clock, or 12 o'clock equals 90, 6 o'clock is 180. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Let me start. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. 3 o'clock is 0 degrees, 12 o'clock is 90, 9 o'clock is 180, and 6 o'clock is 270 degrees. Sometimes when you, uh, when you select data object, it's going to give you a value that doesn't really seem correct. And let me select my line tool. I'm going to switch to free pick. And I'm going to draw a line from the center of my clock to the outside. And so about right here, we can agree that that's 45 degrees. Okay, we'll go to data, select object, and then click on the line. And as you can see, it's 44 point, it's 44, it's close enough to 45 degrees. Okay. But if I were to go, let me select mark object. I'm going to delete the line. And then I'm going to redraw it, except for this time I'm going to go outside to the center. I'll select Data, Object, click on my line, and now instead of saying 44 degrees, it now says uh, 224 degrees. The reason being is because it's going off of the start point of the line. When we look at the line, we think that it starts from the center and works our way out. But if I move the start point, 
to the center of my clock, as you can see, it's falling about 225 degrees. Okay, so if when you select data object, if it gives you a value that is, say, 180 degrees off, just remember this clock face. Okay, uh, and really what that's telling you is the start point is is at the other end, the other side of the line that you're uh, that you're trying to find the angle of. Okay, so knowing that, let's go back here. I'm going to delete this line. I'll redraw it. We can then go to Data, Object, select our line, and as we can see, this line is 22 and a half degrees. Okay, so let's focus in on a different area. I'm going to start off by drawing a rectangle that is 8 by 6. Just come out here and place it on my drawing area. Now, what I need to do, I need to delete the bottom line and the right vertical line. Again, this is placed as a group, so we need to go to Group, select Ungroup All. I can then safely delete my vertical and my bottom line. I'll then select my Polyline tool. I'm going to switch to Object Snap. I'm going to snap to the, uh, the end of the vertical line. And then on my keyboard, I'm just going to type, I want to go two inches on my x-axis. Okay, now I need to put this at 22 and a half degrees. The easiest way for me to do that is to switch to polar input. Remember, polar is where we specify a distance and an angle. I, I want to make sure that I overshoot this because I'm going to gap the excess away. So I'm going to type 10 inches for my distance and 22 and a half degrees for my angle. Once you're done with the polyline, click the green check or the done button. I'm then going to select my line tool. As you see, I'm still in object snap. I'm going to snap to the end of the top line and I'm going to hold down my shift key. Remember when you hold down your shift key, it's going to give you a nice straight line in all four directions. Um, one thing that I do need to do is switch to free pick. I'll then draw a straight line. Again, I'm overlapping. Once you're overlapped, just click to place that line. We can then go to edit, select gap, and gap away the excess. The last thing that I need to do is radius my corners. Go to edit, fill it. I'll give this a half inch radius. And then again, all you need to do is select the two lines that make up the corners. Next, we have this plate with an inner arc. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to enter the perimeter. Um, And I've got three different ways to make this inner arc. Uh, but I'm going to enter the, uh, the perimeter using uh, relative input. Let me focus in on a different area. And I'm going to use a polyline. I'll just come out here. I'll start my line. And then I'll just start entering coordinates. I want to go 0 on my x-axis, negative 7 on my y. I want to go 3 over on my x, 0 on my y. I'm then going to go 3 inches up. I'll go 3 inches over. We're then going to go 3 inches down. We'll go 3 inches over again. We're then going to go 7 inches up. And finally, we'll go 9 inches to the left. Okay, once you're done with, with the polyline, just click the green check. 
And now, um, see, I said I had three different ways. The first way, we're going to use parallel. I'm going to select Edit, Parallel, and I'm going to give this a, uh, the arc had a one and a half inch radius, so I'm going to give this a one and a half inch offset. I want to parallel this line one and a half inches up. I'll then go to Markers, select Mark Object, again leaving at the default division of two, and I want to select the parallel line and the original line. I'm then going to select my Arc Tool and switch to Marker Snap. I want to select the bottom left marker, the top center, and the bottom right. I can then delete the parallel line and my original line, go to markers and clear my markers, and there you go. That's one way to do it. Uh, another thing that you can do, let me redraw my line real quickly here. I'm going to select my circle, and I'm going to give this a one and a half inch radius. Oh, actually, one thing that I forgot to do, I forgot to go to markers, select mark object. I'll leave it at the default division of two and select uh, my center line here. I can then select circle, giving this a one and a half inch radius. I need to switch to marker snap and I'm going to click on the center marker. Okay. Normally what I would do, I would just select gap and I would gap away the excess, but I'm going to select markers and clear markers first so we can see what's going on when I gap it. Go to Edit, Gap. I want to gap this circle, places a marker at, uh, at the intersection points. I want to gap it from this marker to this marker, and I want to remove the bottom portion. I can then delete my center line, and there's another way to create the arc. Let's redraw our center line. And the last method that I have, I'm going to go to Draw, select Arc, and we can just choose the Radius Clockwise Arc. Remember when using the Radius Clockwise or Counterclockwise, all you need to do is specify the radius. Well, we know the radius is one and a half. As you can see, I'm in Object Snap. I'll just click the left side and then click the right side. I can then delete the... Um, my center line, and there you go. Okay, next we have a belt guard. Give you a second to look at all these dimensions. Okay. We're first going to start off uh, by placing these center holes here. Notice they're 11 inches apart. <clears throat> On my grid, I've got my, uh, my grid point spaced every one inch. Let's see, that was a one inch radius. I'm just going to snap that to a grid point. Now, what I used to do, uh, and what you can do, you can place a circle on top of another circle, but you can't really see it. Uh, but then you can go to move and tell it you want to move one of the circles so many inches, and, and it will move it. Uh, but what I've started to do for the uh, these WebEx demos, I'm just going to go over one grid point and place another circle. I can then select move. I want to move this circle. 10 inches on my x-axis. Okay, so now from center to center, it's 11 inches apart. Next, I want to draw a 3-inch radius circle, and I'm going to place it over my right hole. I'll then draw a 4-inch radius circle, place it over the left one. Let's zoom out a little bit, get some elbow room here. And I'm going to go to Draw and select Tangents. I want to draw outside tangents from this circle to this circle. I'll then go to Edit, 
select parallel, and I'm going to give this a two inch offset. I want to parallel my tangent lines two inches outside. Next, I need to gap my, uh, my outer circles. I'm going to go to edit, select gap. I want to gap this circle from this marker to this marker and remove the inner portion. I'll do the same thing on the other side. At this point, I can delete the original tangent lines. I'll select my line tool. I'll switch to object snap and connect the parallel lines with, uh, with the arcs. Okay, and there is a belt guard. Okay, next we have a round flange. Now this fitting is actually in the fitting library, but, uh, but it's always good to know how to do it yourself. And for this, I do have two different methods. So let's focus in on a different area here. I'm going to start off by placing a one inch radius circle. Uh, I'll just place it on a grid point, that's fine. I'm then going to place a 4 inch radius circle on top of that. And finally I'll place a 6 inch radius circle on top of both of them. Snapping on the same center point. I then want to go to markers, mark object, and I'm going to give this a division of 6. I want to click the 4 inch radius circle. I'll then select my circle tool and I'm going to enter a, a half inch radius. I'm going to switch to marker snap and I'm just going to snap on my markers. I can then select delete, delete the four inch radius circle, go to markers and clear markers. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another way we can do it I'm going to start by placing a half inch radius circle out here on a grid point. I'll then place a one inch radius circle on top of that one and then place a six inch radius circle on top of both of them. I'll then go to edit, move. I want to move the half inch circle four inches on my x-axis. I'll then go to edit, copy. I want to make multiple copies. I want to make multiple copies of this circle. I want five more copies and I'm going to use a center point. Okay, now remember when using the center point option when it says select location to copy object to, it really wants to know where is that center point? Well, the center point's right here. I'll just click with my mouse, and it gives me five more copies of this original circle around this center point. Okay, next we're going to look at this slotted hole. focus in on a different area here. <clears throat> I'm going to start by placing a two and a quarter inch radius circle. I'll just snap to a grid point. I'm then going to place an eight by eight rectangle, or actually I guess that would be a square, uh, on top of that circle. I'll just click on its center point going to go to markers, select mark object, and I'm going to give this a division of four. I'm going to click my circle. I'm then going to select my line tool, switch to markers. I'm sorry, marker snap. And I'm going to draw like a, uh, like a plus or like a little cross here. I'll then go to edit, select parallel, and I'm going to give this 
a quarter inch offset. I'm going to parallel each center line a quarter inch in both directions. I can then, um, actually, I can then uh, go to Edit, select Parallel, and I'm going to give this another offset of one and three quarter inch. Again, paralleling the center line in both directions. I can then select my delete button and delete the, the original center lines. Let's zoom in here real quick. I'm going to go to edit, select gap, and then I just need to start gapping some of this stuff away. And if you guys will, just give me a minute. And let's go ahead and gap our tabs out. With a little practice, you can get pretty quick at this. Uh, at this point, I can select my delete button and get all of these little um, scragglers. Let me go to markers, clear markers, and there is a slotted hole. Okay, next we have this saw blade. This is just kind of a, a fun little thing to do. Let's focus in on a different area here. I'm going to start by placing a quarter inch radius circle on a grid point. I'm then going to place a 10 inch diameter circle on top of that. I'm going to go to marker, select mark object, and I'm going to give this a division of 22 because I want 22 teeth on my saw blade. Okay. Now at this point we need to pick two of the markers. I'm going to select these two markers at about uh, 3 o'clock here. I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to select my line tool and really what this is going to do, it's going to demonstrate how you can switch between different snap icons and different, uh, different draw tools. Uh, I might start off with one, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to keep it the entire time. Okay, so I've got my line tool. I'm going to switch to marker snap. I'm going to snap to this marker, and I want to go one inch on my x-axis. Um, Again, I've, uh, I've still got my line tool selected. I'm going to switch to object snap. I want to snap to the end of this line, and I'm going to switch to free pick. And I want to draw a line, say, say about right in here. I'm going to select my arc tool. I'm going to switch to object snap. I'm going to snap to the end of this line. I'll switch to free pick. It's asking me to pick a point along my arc circumference. I'll draw it about right in here. Um, I'm still in free pick. I want to draw, let's say, about to here. I'll switch to my line tool, switch to object snap, snap to the end of my arc, switch to marker snap, and snap to my marker. Okay? Now, don't worry, we don't have to do this 21 more times. Uh, but what, what we need to do next, I'm going to delete the outer circle, and I'm going to group this together. I'll go to group, I'll select box select, and I'm going to draw a bounding box around this series of uh, lines and arcs. I'll then go to edit, copy, multi-copy. I want to make multiple copies of this group. I want 21 more copies, and I'm going to use a center point. I'll say OK to that. As you see, I'm in Marker Snap, so I just need to click on the center marker. I can then go to Markers and select Clear Markers. Okay. 
Now, this is also something that uh, was kind of fun for me to do. Um, I'm not going to create this little SpongeBob character, and, it, and if you look at him, as you can see, he's not really optimized to cut out. Uh, there's things that I can do to make him optimized, but uh, this was just something to kind of demonstrate what you can do with the parts program. Basically, if you can draw it on paper, you can draw it in the parts program. And if you look at SpongeBob, uh, he's just a bunch of circles, squares, and arcs. Okay? Now, uh, what I want to show you is how I did the uh, his head, the sponge part. So let's, we'll, we'll kind of keep him in on the screen here. I'm just going to draw a rectangle. And oh, I meant to switch to free pick there. Okay, uh, that's basically what I did initially. And from this point, I'm going to go to draw, and I'm going to select spline. Remember, spline. Um, you need to enter a resolution, and I'm going to give that a 10. I'll say OK to that, and I'm going to select free pick, and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to place a series of markers inside and outside of uh, the perimeter of SpongeBob's head. Okay, I'll go ahead and click my green check here. And uh, maybe I want to I'll go ahead and just finish up this little part right here. And I can then delete the original square and the uh, the lines behind it. Okay? So, uh, what the poly or what I'm um, not polyline what the spline is doing, it's uh, it's taking instead of uh, drawing a zigzag line, it's turning that zigzag line into a curvy line. Okay, that is it for me today, guys. 